Can nature be tricked by an artificial womb? Researchers in Barcelona have created an artificial placenta prototype in the hopes it could help extremely premature babies. After tests on animals kept fetuses alive for 12 days. The artificial placenta prototype is a translucent container made of biocompatible material. This creates a protective environment inside which the fetus's lungs, intestines and brain can continue to develop. Babies born after six months of pregnancy or less are considered extremely premature with a high risk of death or disability. The World Health Organization's latest figures show that around 900,000 such babies died worldwide in 2019. Project head, Eduard Gratakos. With the concept of an artificial womb, we are trying to develop a system that allows us to keep a fetus outside its mother, but still in the fetal conditions. That it continues to breathe through the umbilical cord, so we don't force it to breathe through lungs that are not yet fully developed. To feed it through the umbilical cord, to live surrounded by liquid at a constant temperature. It's extremely delicate to achieve this, to trick nature to make this possible. This is what makes these projects so complex. Gratakos leads a team of 35 people from BC Natal Medical Research Centre and Fondation La Caixa. The team has conducted preclinical studies with lambs where they achieved a 12-day fetus survival and plans to also test with pigs before proposing a human trial in a few years. Among a few such projects worldwide, one group of scientists at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia managed to keep animal fetuses alive for 28 days. It's always very difficult to, when you try to predict uh, how much time you need to go into a clinical practice. We think, uh, in terms of our project here in Barcelona, that maybe in two years, maybe three years, we will have a prototype with which we are in conditions to, to propose a clinical trial. Uh, but of course, this is a path that is full of uncertainties. Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting. exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colonist. 